I'm going to explain the algorithm for binary exponentiation using seven examples. The goal is to calculate x raised to some power n. Now a simple way to calculate this is to multiply x by itself n times. However, there is a faster way, and this is called binary exponentiation. Let's start with the case when n is equal to 2. So what we want to do is calculate x squared. First, we break x squared into two parts. On the left side, we calculate the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 2. The largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 2 is 2, so on the left side, we put x squared. On the right side, we put the remainder. This is equal to 1. Now, if we start out with x, we can easily calculate x squared. We just take x multiplied by x to get x squared. 1 is also easy to calculate. 1 is equal to 1. Okay, so if we set up our algorithm like this and then start from the bottom, we will be able to calculate x squared. On the first iteration, when n is equal to 2, we initialize this z variable to be equal to 1. On the next iteration, we divide n by 2, so n will be equal to 1, and we can compute this part of the diagram. We know what z is, z is equal to 1, and we can also calculate x multiplied by x, which is equal to x squared. And then we combine these two results to get our final result, x squared. How about the case for n equals to 3? When n is equal to 3, our final goal is to calculate x raised to the power of 3. x raised to the power of 3 is equal to x squared multiplied by x. What we're doing here on the left side is calculating the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 3. And the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 3 is equal to 2. So on the left side, we put x squared. x squared breaks down into two parts, x and x. We multiply x by x to get x squared. On the right side, we have a x and we'll carry this over from our first iteration. On the first iteration, we will start with n equals to 3, and we set this z variable equal to x. On the next iteration, we divide n by 2. And here we're doing integer division, so there's no decimals. 3 divided by 2 rounds down to be equal to 1. So when n is equal to 1, we know what z is. z is equal to x. And we also do this calculation on the left side, x multiplied by x to compute x squared. And our final step is to combine what's on the left side with what's on the right side. When we combine this, we get x raised to the power of 3. Let's move on and calculate x raised to the power of 4. x raised to the power of 4, we can break this down into two parts. What is the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 4? Well, it's equal to 4. So on the left side, we put x raised to the 4. And what is the remainder on the right side when we have x raised to the 4 on the left side? Well, the remainder will be equal to 1. To calculate x raised to the 4, we'll need x raised to the power of 2 multiplied by x raised to the power of 2. And to calculate x raised to the power of 2, we'll need x multiplied by x itself. Notice that on the left side, if we know what x is, then we can compute x raised to the power of 2. And once we know what x raised to the power of 2 is, we can easily calculate x raised to the power of 4. In other words, in order to calculate x raised to the power of 4, we then have to multiply x by itself four times. Instead, let's count the number of computations that we did over here to calculate x raised to the 4. Well, here is one computation. And then to get x raised to the 4, here's another computation. So to calculate x raised to the 4, instead of multiplying x four times, we only have to do multiplication two times. So this is where the efficiency of the algorithm comes from. Okay, moving on. On the right side, we have a 1, so z is equal to 1. So what we can do is initialize z equal to 1. Our loop will start from n equal to 4. On the next iteration, we divide n by 2, and we get n equals to 2. And we can do this part of the calculation, x multiplied by x, to calculate x raised to the power of 2. OK, n is equal to 2. We divide n by 2 again, and we get n is equal to 1. So in this last iteration, we'll do the calculation surrounded in orange. On the left side, we know what x squared is. So we can easily calculate x raised to the 4. Just multiply x squared by itself to get x raised to the 4. On the right side, z is equal to 1. And to get x raised to the power of 4, our final output, we multiply what's on the left side with what is on the right side. x to the 4 times 1 is equal to x raised to the power of 4. And this is how we will get our final calculation of x raised to the power of 4. How about x raised to the power of 5? Well again, let's decompose x raised to the 5 into two parts. On the left side, we ask the question, what is the power of 2 that is less than or equal to 5? Well, it is equal to 4. 
So on the left side, we put x raised to the power of 4. And on the right side, we put the remainder. What is the remainder? Well, we have a 5 minus 4, so it will be x raised to the power of 1. x to the 4 multiplied by x will be equal to x to the 5. On the left side, we can efficiently calculate x raised to the power of 4 if we know what x raised to the power of 2 is. And we can also efficiently calculate x raised to the power of 2 if we know what x is. And on the right side, all we have to do is initialize z equal to x. So on the first iteration, n is equal to 5, so we initialize z equal to x. On the next iteration, we divide n by 2, n is equal to 5, 5 divided by 2, and then rounding down the decimals, we will get 2, n is equal to 2. So on this iteration, we do this part of the algorithm, calculate x squared. On the last iteration, we divide n by 2 again, so 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1, so now n is equal to 1. And we do this part of the calculation. On the left side, we know what x squared is, so we can easily calculate x raised to the power of 4. On the right side, we have z equals to x, and combine x raised to the power of 4 with x, and we get x raised to the power of 5. n equals to 6 is an interesting case, so let's take a look. x raised to the power of 6 breaks down into two parts, x raised to the power of 4, and the remainder x raised to the power of 2. And why do we have a 4 here? Well, it's because 4 is the greatest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 6. On the left side, again, we can easily calculate x raised to the power of 4 if we know what x raised to the power of 2 is. And x raised to the power of 2, we can easily calculate this if we know what x is. Okay, so this is what's going to happen on the left side. On the right side is a little bit more interesting. x squared breaks down into two parts. So what we're going to be doing here is similar to what we did over here in the first step. We ask the question, what is the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 2, the 2 that you see over here? And we put that answer on the left side. So on the left side, we put x squared. And on the right side, we put the remainder. Remainder is equal to 1. Now, here's the interesting part. At what point do we know what x squared is? Well, it will be at this step over here. So when we do the for loop, and at the point we know x squared, we will carry this x squared over to the right. And now on the right side, we have a 1. We will initialize z equal to 1. The loop will start with n equals to 6. We initialize z equal to 1. On the next iteration, we divide n by 2. 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. So n is equal to 3. And on this iteration, we first multiply x by itself to compute x squared. And once we know what x squared is, we carry this over to the right. And then we multiply this x squared by 1 to get x squared. So we get z is equal to x squared. On the next iteration, n will be equal to 3 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. And we do this calculation. We first start with here. x squared multiplied by x squared to calculate x raised to the power of 4. And then the last step is to combine x raised to the power of 4 with z, which is on the right. z is equal to x squared. We combine it with x raised to the power of 4 to get our final result x raised to the power of 6. For n equals to 7, we're going to run the same algorithm as n equals to 6. The only difference is we will initialize z equal to x instead of 1. x raised to the power of 7 breaks down into two parts. On the left side, we ask the question, what is the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 7? Well, it is equal to 4, so we put x raised to the power of 4. And on the right side, we put the remainder, x raised to the power of 3. Okay, x raised to the power of 4 is easily calculated if we know x raised to the power of 2. And x raised to the power of 2, we can easily calculate this if we know what x is. On the right side, x raised to the power of 3 breaks down into two parts. What is the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 3? We put that on the left side. This will be x raised to the power of 2. And on the right side, we put the remainder, x. At what point do we know what x squared is? Well, we know what x squared is after we do this calculation. So after we do this calculation, we bring over the x squared over to the right. And this will allow us to calculate x raised to the power of 3. And where do we get this x from? We'll get it by simply initializing z equal to x. The loop will start with n equals to 7. We initialize z equal to x. On the next iteration, we divide n by 2. 7 divided by 2 is equal to 3. The first part of the algorithm, we calculate x squared and then bring this x squared over to the right. And then we multiply by the current value of z. The current value of z is equal to x, multiplied by x squared. So now z is equal to x raised to the power of 3. 
On the next iteration of the loop, we divide the current value of n by 2. 3 divided by 2 is equal to 1. And then we do this part of the calculation, the part highlighted in orange. Let's start from here first. We know what x squared is, so we multiply by itself to get x raised to the power 4. We also know what z is. The current value of z is x raised to the power 3. Combine these two values together, and we get x raised to the power 7. For our final example, we'll calculate x raised to the power 14. x raised to the power 14 decomposes into two parts. On the left side, we ask the question again, what is the largest power 2 that is less than or equal to 14? Well, this is equal to 8. So on the left side, we put x raised to the power of 8. And on the right side, we put the remainder. What is the remainder? This will be 14 minus 8, which will be equal to 6. So on the right side, we put x raised to the power of 6. Okay, let's draw out the rest of the algorithm for the left side. x raised to the power of 8 is x raised to the power of 4 multiplied by x raised to the power of 4. And x raised to the power of 4 is x squared multiplied by x squared. And lastly, x squared is x multiplied by x. Okay, let's move on to the right side. x raised to the power of 6 is x raised to the power of 4 and the remainder x squared. We will know what the value of x raised to the power of 4 is when we do this part of the calculation. Okay, how about x squared? x squared breaks down into two parts, x squared and 1. And we will know what the value of x squared over here is if we do this calculation. And lastly, we initialize z equal to 1. We start the loop from n equals 14. For the next iteration, we divide n by 2. 14 divided by 2 is equal to 7. And we start out from this calculation. x multiplied by x, we get x squared. Once we know what x squared is, we bring this over to the right, multiply by the current value of z, current value of z is equal to 1, and we get x squared. So the current value of z is now equal to x squared. On the next iteration, we divide n by 2 again, and we round down so we get n is equal to 3. Again, we start from the left. We currently know what x squared is. Multiply by itself, we get x raised to the power of 4. Bring this over to the right, and then multiply by the current value of z. z is equal to x squared. Multiply x raised to the power of 4 by x squared, and we get that the new value of z is now equal to x raised to the power of 6. And then for the last iteration, we repeat. Starting from the left side, we calculate x raised to the power of 8, and then we combine this with the current value of z. The current value of z is equal to x raised to the power of 6. Multiply x raised to the power of 8 by x raised to the power of 6, and we get x raised to the power of 14. 